Hello! So today we're taking a first look, for me, at the Boeing C-17 Globemaster in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is a community developed aircraft, it's not a professionally developed aircraft and it's available for free download from FlightSim.2. So I'll put a link in the, the notes of the video to the aircraft. But you can see we've got it parked here on the ground at Milden Hall in the UK. and it's absolutely amazing that it's been developed over the course of several years and it's been through many or i say many it's up to a fourth version but it's continually updated as it's improved so you can see the the entire insides of the aircraft have been developed and we'll get through some of the features as we have a look around it and we'll go go and start the aircraft up so i have written up the startup instructions i'll put a link for those as well in the notes of the video and the main reason I wrote it up is because I couldn't find any good documentation for it. So I've cribbed from watching other people starting it up that obviously had knowledge of the real aircraft and from reading the comments on their videos where real servicemen that had flown in the real thing had corrected them. So kind of cross-referencing with what you can do in it. You can't do everything. Um, we've made it as good as we can in terms of the version that exists at the moment. Oh, look, there's no 15 part behind us framed really nicely in the door so yeah if you've been inside a c-17 at an air show this is going to be seem very familiar to you it's um it's quite scary actually how well they have developed it and just how good it is considering these are not professional 3d artists or that some of them may be but um it maybe doesn't have some of the polish of some of the other aircraft but it's absolutely not bad at all so you can come in through the cockpit and you can see the um the switch gear inside the cockpit it's very clean it's very sharp it's very functional and most of it works it's it's remarkable really obviously because this is a military aircraft some of the information about how the systems work or how they operate is not publicly available and some of the um, stats around you know like flap speeds rotate speeds things like that are just not going to be publicly available so there's some generalizations and things like the um, the flight management computer for example it's got a retrofitted Boeing 737 system, I think, in it, which it works, but obviously the numbers, they're just, they're representative, let's put it that way. Okay, let's go back through the aeroplane, and we'll go and leave the drone camera to one side, and let's go and see how we actually start this aeroplane up then. So, I, as I said, I've gone and written up um, some notes which I will make available and I'm going to work through them so this is much me validating my own notes as it is showing you how to do it. So first thing we do is go control one and we go and remove the cones and covers so if you have a look outside you will notice it's got these really nicely modeled covers over the engines and the it's got cones around it and it's also got some pito covers so if we remove those then they are gone and you can see we can now see the aircraft. Okay so going press control and four we can go overhead and we can go and turn the batteries on for the aircraft and it will start complaining pretty much immediately yeah so we come down into the cockpit and we press the master caution button and it resets the master caution and that error goes away okay so then we can go back overhead now and we can go and turn the emergency lights to armed we can go to the fuel section and go and press the forward and aft buttons on each of the fuel pumps. So again, I might argue you would do this later, but we'll do it here because that's where some of the other people that have started the aeroplane have done it. Um, okay, so then control five, we go further overhead and we go to the APU section here and we go to start on the APU. So we press it twice, it comes down and you can see the APU is starting up and you'll start to hear fans come on. Okay, hopefully you can hear that. Let's make sure that, yeah, it's going to get noisy in here once the engines are up and running, so I'm, I don't want to go and modify the sound too much. Okay, so we wait for the APU to get to 100%. While we're waiting for that, we can pan down a little bit. We can turn on the IRU system. This is the inertial reference unit, which tells the aeroplane which way up it is and where it is. So there's, we're at 100% now. So then we can go to the APU power here and go to on. So 
So then back down in the cockpit, control three. We're gonna go and make sure this is on EPR, it is. And we're gonna press the max button. I think this remembers between sessions, to be honest, what mode it was in. So this is your thrust, the equivalent of the thrust modulation system in some of the older airplanes, obviously modern engine management systems. So you've got max power, intermediate power, max continuous thrust, derated and manual. So I'm gonna leave it on max just for ease of explanation and again there's no real good notes on these systems so this is based on servicemen having used them and shared what they can okay so having done that we go back over head control four we rotate the um, engine shutoff valves or fuel shutoff valves for all four engines Then back down in the cockpit, we're going to go and switch on any remaining screens that aren't on, we don't have to. And calibrate the altimeter, so we'll press B, I think it's already calibrated, looks like it. So on the FMC we can go and then program up anything we need to do. So it's worth pointing out, if you keep it on the screen, as you turn the flight directors on, you get the magenta bars and it says FD. We can go and set our target altitude for our initial climb out, so we'll go and say, for example, 25,000 feet. We're not actually going to fly today, we might just get off the runway. I just don't want to make the video go on for hours and hours showing you different things when you can go and play with these systems yourself. So you've got um, LNAV mode, obviously nothing, none of this will work until we program the flight plan in, but we can go and see we've got heading mode, so you've got heading mode there. You've got 85 magnetic showing up there, so we're going to be taking off runway 28, so we'll go to 280 other way, half, halfway around the compass to get to 280. There we go. So you've got uh, speed hold mode as well. So you can say uh, 200 knots from takeoff and you can engage speed hold, obviously once the automatic throttle system is on. So there's two switches there for the throttles and for autopilot. Okay, so that's all we really need to look at there. It does have, it's, a, it's very Boeing-y, isn't it? So it is a Boeing aircraft. So you've got things like the vertical speed mode. Um, you've got uh, LNAV, you've got VNAV. Um, it's worth pointing out that the, the GPS is a retrofitted, looks like a 737 variant um, from the simulators. They've obviously, obviously retrofitted it from an aircraft that already exists. Probably the 747 that's in the sim, and they've just rebadged it. Okay, so once we've done the the MCP, yes, we can come into here and go to pause in it, for example. Okay, it's the lower unit that works. Pause in it, and we can pick up the GPS, drop it in. We can put in where we're flying from, so if we go and have a quick look at a little nav map. We're at Milden Hall, so that's EGUN is the ICAO code, E-G-U-N. Drop that into reference airport, go to the next page and we can go and notice it's not very accurate that it hasn't carried over the ICAO code in the scratch pad and we'll illustrate here going over to Wharton so EGNO EGNO and then we can go to performance initialization next and we can put in a cost index we'll just say 100 and reserves we'll put in one one pound, that's funny. I think it's in thousands in reality, but. Um, so we can go to thrust limit and take off. And again, the flap setting is a bit of a mystery because you can't get this data for the real aircraft. So, and again, with the rotate speeds, if you go and look them up, there's nothing to go on. Thrust limit, that, that goes back in a circle now. So, okay, so we could go into departure and arrival. So we're departing from E-Gun, Romy 2.8. We'll do the Nug 2-2 departure, and then we can go to route. Oh, go, sorry, go back into here, go to arrival. Say we're going to come into um, Wharton Runway 25, do the, it's already selected the transition. So if we look in legs, that should all be in there now. We can go next and previous to flick through the pages. So that's all good. It's a very simple route. It just shows you it's essentially a Boeing FMC of sorts. So coming back over to the MCP, you should now be able to select LNAV. So if we go and have a look, we press LNAV here. 
Mm, it's not reflecting it. It probably will once the airplane's in operation. So can we say VNAV? No, it's not going to allow pre-selection while it's not switched on. Okay, that's fine. We can go to heading hold though, which is already done, I think. Uh, did we already do that? Let's just try that again. Yeah, it will allow heading hold. So will it allow LNAV then? Yes, it will. So it's just showing course. Okay. So you have got display modes, but a lot of this in, is inoperative, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway, let's go and go and start the engines up. So we press Control 4 to come overhead. And we remember we've already done all the valves for the fuel. So we literally pull engine number one, come back down to the cockpit, have a look, and you'll see the numbers coming up slowly. You're waiting for the RPM on N1 to get to about 24% for each engine and you do them in turn. This is where this aircraft deviates from the real one a little bit. We don't really have good control overhead of the, um, the bleed air. Whereas I think in the real thing you would get the first engine up and running and then you can play games with switching the APU electrical generation off and cross-feeding engine one's ability to generate power. And you may even put engine one into reverse to get it to generate even more power and to reroute the bleed air. But it's a, a little bit simplified in this version of it as far as I can see. But I'm just going by the comments from real military aviators who have, have commented you know, on how the, the typical processes they would work through in the real thing. So that's come up to 24%. We'll pull the second engine you'll see it come up to speed. So again, this is quite boring doing this bit. Just waiting for each engine. We can go outside and have a listen now. You can hear them getting noisy. Engines are spinning up. So up to 4%. You can see the engine management system showing the exhaust gas temperatures down here. And it's showing the N1 and the N N2, which is good. You can switch what this shows to show different data. Okay, so then engine number three. Notice these fall back in on their own. There's a few little graphical glitches here and there, but I'm going to let it pass because it's free. This is community developed. That it's as good as it is, is remarkable, really. It reminds me a little bit of the, um, the Zebo mod 737 in X-Plane, because that was community developed as well. waiting for the numbers to come up. Just noted a slight mistake in my written instructions. I'll have to correct them before I make them available to everybody. It's fascinating that in the real aircraft you can cross-feed the, um, the bleed air and the electrical power from the, each engine. So I guess it's to allow, because it's a military aircraft, you could um, work around problems. Whereas obviously in a commercial aircraft if you get a serious enough problem you're just grounded on the spot. But it has more strategies available in the C-17 than you would in a typical commercial aircraft. Or at least that's what I've gleaned from the comments I've seen about the real world procedures. Okay, so engines are up and running. So we go back overhead. We go and turn on the generators for the four engines. And then we can go and turn the APU off. So it says it's in use at the moment. So we can use the 
Oh, we can just click on it, I guess, to turn it off. Yep. And then overhead, we can go to the start control and use the mouse wheel roller to roll it. You roll down and it goes up. It's a bit non-intuitive and that switches off the APU. Okay, so we go back down. Oh, actually, no, sorry. I tell a lie. So I've got a mistake still in my instructions here. I've got the emergency power still there. Oh, that's already done. So second column at the bottom, we've got the emergency power that goes to auto. The anti-ice section, we go and turn on anti-ice across the four engines and we turn the probe heats on. And you can see now it's just complaining about the doors. So we can go to control one and we can ask all the doors to be closed around the aeroplane. Now we're ready to go essentially. So we can have a look. You can see those nice animations of all those things happening. I'm going to put the flaps to take off position. So you can see the flaps and the slats are all nicely animated. And we can stir the controls around now and we can see it's really nicely done, isn't it? Okay, so doors closed, prepare to taxi. So what we do is roll the mouse wheel on the nose taxi lights to put the taxi lights on. If we go and have a look outside, you see they're nice and bright. There's also a head-up display, so we switch that on. Not that we need it right now, but we can then go and come off the parking brake and start rolling. So shall we, while we're doing this, we'll put the head tracking on because it always helps with taxiing. Notice it's a collimated HUD, it's very good. Look, as I move my head around, it stays on the axis of the aircraft. So is he taxiing down the runway or has he just landed? I'm just watching the aircraft that's on the runway at the moment. I think he's about to come this way. I think we're going to just miss this aircraft by a few feet. You don't realise how big this aircraft is until you see it next to a B-52 and realise it dwarfs a B-52. Okay, we'll wait our turn. I 
Notice in common with lots of other um, US Air Force aircraft, the I think the F-15 is the other one that comes to mind, the indicated airspeed ribbon on the side of the head-up display scrolls the opposite way than most European fighter aircraft, or aircraft full stop. It's interesting. Okay, so now we're on the runway. We'll go and put the oops, the lights on. So we click these ones. We click those a second time to make them go to land. We can put the um, the wing lights on to extend them. So the wing lights are right on the corners. I'm not sure if it has strobes or not. It has an awful lot of configuration with lights around um, you know what just let's just say there's a lot of configuration you can do with lights and I haven't got to the bottom of all of it yet. Okay. So full throttle. It's 80 knots, 100. It said 140 for rotation on the FMC, didn't it? 140. Okay, let's keep an eye on it. We don't want to go too fast, so raise the flaps. So, auto throttle on, autopilot on. We can go to speed hold mode and it will hold 200 knots. So it should use pitch to get rid of that extra speed because we're obviously over speeding slightly. So yeah, it's climbing look like crazy. Not entirely sure of all of the symbology. Again, like I said, a lot of it isn't documented very well. So you'll have an element of exploring and trying to figure it out for yourself along the way. So obviously we're climbing out to 25,000 feet. We're now hitting 200 knots, which is what we had commanded. So it's bringing the nose down gently, look. And you can see down here, it's moderating the throttles automatically to hit the target and to go for a sustainable climb rate. So we could now go for max continuous thrust down here. Which will lessen the climb rate again. Look, it's dropping the nose. It's holding on to 200 knots. We could ask it to accelerate to 250. So it will drop the nose to make that happen. So we've already gone through 10,000 feet though, so landing lights would go off. Are these three position or two position switches? No, they're just three position. Uh, two position, sorry. <laughs> so there you go. The C-17. good isn't it and it's free so I'll put like I said I'll put the links in the the notes of the video both to download the airplane and to download my instructions that I've written up my first draft to get the airplane up and running I may change the order slightly I'm not comfortable with putting the fuel pumps on ahead of time but we'll see how we get on okay I'll see you soon take care